Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel. And there are just so many articles out there about how community currencies work, about how they help their communities, that I'm going to read one long one that'll take two posts. It's from October the 13th by Aaron Farrington, A-R-I-N, Farrington, F-A-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N, and from Changemakers.net, when the money isn't flowing, invent your own currency. Now, Obviously, it's a great idea, but perhaps Erin Farrington might be a mover who can urge her friends and any connections she has to try and find out if they know anybody going to Davos or Belem. Because the ultimate aim here is to turn Erin or one of her friends or one of her connections into someone who's going to urge a unilets on those people. So I'm hoping that uh, for someone who understands the system as well as this, that we can have at some point a consensus to push these two fora to adopt the Unilets resolution. Is Aaron Farrington in favor of a worldwide time-based currency or not? So will she put her money where her mouth is and act and work to see if we can't get a Unilets? Well, Aaron, I'm asking you, do your best. And it was published at www.pnyv.org. It was also published at www.changemakers.net. And it says, When money is scarce or stops flowing, alternative currencies can keep a local economy afloat. They convert time, skills, and other resources into wealth and keep resources circulating among community members so there is greater demand for local businesses, goods, and services. Aaron Farrington. How would you like to be able to move house, packing, transportation, cleaning, moving materials removed, and guarding included, without spending a dollar? If you lived in New South Wales, Australia, you could use shells issued in points to pay for everything but the gardening, which you would pay for with time. This may sound wacky, you could use shells, issued points to pay for everything. But it is a hypothetical example of how three well-established alternative currency systems, the local exchange trading system, I say local employment trading system, a system for trading employment locally, which makes a lot more sense than a system for trading exchange locally. Exchange and trading is a redundancy, it's a repetition. Local employment trading system was what I financed in 1984. And community exchange system, CES, allow users to get what they need when they join communities that use alternative or complementary currencies. Why would anyone bother juggling multiple types of alternative currency when traditional cash seems to work quite well? Well, there are advantages to lose using a local currency for buying and selling. Resources keep circulating among community members, so there's a greater demand for local businesses, goods, and services, and community residents can purchase more. When a time trade is made, the needs of an individual needs are matched with resources that satisfy those needs, and the community life is enriched because more needs get met. This is particularly true when the disenfranchised are brought into the system. For example, newly released prisoners, the working poor, the elderly, sick, or handicapped who might not otherwise get to participate in community life or have access to bank accounts or loans. In a moneyless system, they are not burdened with interest payments or monetary debt. Now, this is not a moneyless system. It's a physical tokenless system. It's a credit system. But it's not a moneyless system because credits are money. Alternative currency systems were all founded with a focus on community enrichment, openness, relationship, and trust, and a compelling sense of social justice. But not all alternative currencies function this way. Complementary currency systems like the Terra can produce profits in the traditional sense while strengthening community ties because they are backed by hard currency deposits or commodities. A complicated way of doing it compared to time. Poor people without hard currency or commodities need not apply to the Terra system, right? So, while adopting different approaches, these alternative currency systems were all founded with a focus on community enrichment, using payment systems characterized by openness, relationship, and trust in lieu of fees, interest, and penalties. They aim to develop and fuel local economies and or increase goods to services and goods and services, access to goods and services. Further driving their mission is a compelling sense of social justice. 
When law professor and social activist Edgar Kahn invented time dollars for the currency of time banks in 1980, he was reacting to government's pullback from providing social services. If there was not going to be enough of the old money to fix all the problems facing our country and our society, he reasoned, why not make a new kind of money to pay people for what needs to be done, meeting unmet needs with unused resources? Money is like an iron ring we've put through our noses. We've forgotten that we designed it. It's now leading us around. Time dollars value everyone's contributions equally. One hour equals one service credit. The By agreeing on the terms of transaction with time dollars, two people literally create the necessary money in the process. There is no scarcity of liquidity, and they don't need to get funding from elsewhere, says Bernard Lietar, author of The Future of Money and a research fellow at the Center for Sustainable Resources at the University of California in Berkeley, a guy who doesn't think let's can do the job, the whole job. Yeah, what a what a supporter, eh? Lietar invented the Terra, a so you can bet it ain't going to work perfectly. A complementary currency backed by an inflation-resistant, standardized basket of the dozen most important commodities and services in the global market. And if you don't have any of those services to buy in with collateral, you can't play. To address what he sees as shortcomings of our conventional currency system, he believes the terror will help to stabilize world economies by providing a reliable, inflation-resistant standard of international value. Yeah, how complicated. Instead of an hour of time, which is easy to understand, you got to guess the value of a basket of 12 different things. Keep it complicated so the economists got jobs. Money is like an iron ring. Okay, money's like an iron ring put through our noses, leaders said. We forgot we designed it and it's now leading us around. I think it's time to figure out where we want to go, in my opinion, towards sustainability and community, and then design a money system that gets us there. Well, I've already figured out where we want to go, and I've already designed the money system that's going to get us there, and it's a time-based money system, not a 12 commodities-based money system. Designing a complementary currency system can be very <clears throat> esoteric. I know poker chips are so hard to understand. Even when the base assumptions seem self-evident, time banking, for example, rejects price, valuing all hours equally because prices equate value with scarcity relative to demand. Big problem with the time dollar system is that a doctor's time is worth the same as a dog walker's time, and so there are no doctors in the time dollar system. And I demonstrated at the time dollar conference when they were using little tokens that in a free market, they couldn't stop me from making four hours per hour while they might have only been worth one hour per hour. Whatever a capitalist economy can score, that's fair. And to try and limit me to one hour per hour when I can be earning four is not fair. And that's the fatal flaw in all these time systems where they have equal value for equal hours because that's not true. Fatal flaw. It's an ancient idea that people do things for each other and keep a record, usually a mental record, said Tim Jenkins, creator of CES and an Ash Ashoka fellow since 2007. The same principle applies to CES, except the record is kept on the internet. The system is self-regulating, and unacceptable trades, such as animals for research purposes, are blocked. And again, it's none of their business what people do with their chips. Next, they're going to be saying, I can't buy marijuana with my new chips, and I can't buy a prostitute with my new chips, and I can't buy, I can't gamble with my new chips. None of their business what we do with our chips if we want to use our chips for. Of course, these are the guys who have a Let's Police Department to police how you use your Let's Currencies. Even banks don't have a police department to police how they use their currencies. So why are we sticking our noses and blocking transactions? Another fatal flaw. Jenkins has spent most of his adult life fighting for social justice. Yeah, and trying to control everybody. And to end apartheid in South Africa. He believes that the present global money system is at the root of most of the social, economic, political, and environmental problems that confront us today, and that we can only begin to tackle these problems if we have a money system that places the money power in, in the hands of the people who use it. I came to realize that an economy based on a usurious money system would never provide equality and relief from poverty, Jenkins said. We need a system that had no limits and could work for everyone as well.
CES was originally started as a type of local exchange trading system LETS and has grown to become the most popular and user-friendly system available to LETS in similar groups, said Karina Ivat, Central Coast LETS Administrator. LETS is a monetary system, unlike direct barter, with members able to earn credits or points from any member and to spend them with anyone else on, this, on, the, on the scheme. The alternative currency used in Australia's Central Coast LETS is called Shell.